My name is Anand Murugesan, Director of Products at Netscope. Today, I'm going to give a quick introduction to Netscope Advanced Analytics. Let me introduce you to Netscope's, Netscope's Advanced Analytics. This is a cloud-native elastic platform, which is built to do automatic data aggregation using the data pipelines. And the data is collected into a elastic data lake. The data is actually then curated and classified and a very user-friendly schema is getting created for our customers to get the insights. Not only that, our business analysts and data experts have created a lot of out-of-the-box dashboards through which customers can derive insights right away. This is a very easy system. And not only that, it's very economical in the sense that you don't need to maintain those. It's pre pretty agile in the sense that when there is an incident that you want to drill into the details of the incident, all the drill ins are available for you within a couple of mouse clicks, right? That makes the system very elegant for you to use. As you get into the product, the first thing you will notice is the advanced analytics button on the left. You can click on it and then there are a few things that you will see. There is a explore option, there are personal group and a scope library. The explore option is something that you would use to actually build new visualizations from scratch. On the top right hand side, once you navigate here, you will see a bunch of data sets that are available to you. These are some of the curated schemas that Netscope has created for you on your behalf to kind of easily kind of slice and dice your uh, data. So right now you can see alerts, app events, network events, and page events. You will see more here as we add more data sets to the product. Then you go to the personal folder, you will see the list of folders into which you can categorize some of your dashboards. And uh, here are some of the dashboards that has been uh, created. And uh, let us say that, you know, I want to just take a dashboard and I want to share it with my coworkers. I would go to the group option and put the dashboard over here. And uh, Netscope library is the out of the box dashboards and widgets that are already available. If you see here, CISO dashboard is a very popular one where it just gives you cross-sectional view of your entire security posture, right? And at the bottom, uh, there are some of the reusable components called widgets. So when you're building dashboards, you, can, you, do, you don't need to actually start from scratch. These widgets will come in handy where you could actually drag and drop some of those widgets into a nice dashboard and you can save it. So those are some of the top high level tour of the product. Uh, once you kind of get this enabled, it will automatically load up the tenant with 90 days worth of data so that you can get start using, using the product right away. On the left nav, what you see is if I open up these, these are all the fields which are there from page events. Um, the custom attributes are what we pull in from the customer's active directory, things like manager, department, and so on. Uh, you can search through any of these fields as well. So I can just kind of type in, um, I want to look at kind of CCL. So that filter is there as well, because right now there are a lot of fields. So the search com comes in handy. Dimensions and measures. A dimension is kind of any attribute. Uh, it's any characteristic of the data. So in our case, it would be application, site, URL. So all of these fields which we have, they are dimensions. The only measures which are there is basically which you can quantify. So things like number of events, number of applications, uh, the total bytes. So anything which is quantified uh, so that's what a measure is. On the right side, the top section is kind of where the filters are. So this is where uh, we can filter on different things, different um, different fields, different attributes. So all of that, those filters will go over here. The different visualizations. So this is where how you visualize the data. And then there are many more in this as well. Uh, this is where the data will show up as I start pulling in. So let's say I want to look at um, kind of top applications by 
the number of users. So I just want to see kind of from the discovery perspective, right? What are my most used applications are? So I just click on it. So it's just clicking on it brings it on the right side. So click on the application, click on the number of users. So I want to, because I want to see the top applications by the number of users. So that's where um, I just run and then it brings in kind of the top applications. Overall, just bringing the data into the right side, it's all about just click and um, build the report. Options, I can filter on any of these. So let's say if I wanna filter on, in this case, category. Um, so I can just bring the category into the filters. Let me bring in something else. Let's say access method I bring into the filter. So when I click into it, um, there is a small circle which you see over here. So this is a dynamic list. It's not a static list which we are pulling in for each of these filters. It comes up based on the data in that tenant. Let's say I want to kind of do cloud storage so I can pull in into that and then again, the same thing uh, run. Um, so I think overall filters, so that's what you can do. Um, I think you can define your own custom things. There is a row limit. This row limit goes up to 5,000. When the customers download, they can go up to 100,000. There is a different limit for uh, the schedule part of it. In the UI, it's a 5,000 limit. In the download, it's 100,000 limit. I look at, let's say, top 10 applications. All I need to do is just change the limit and then kind of um, Run. So that brings in top 10 applications based on the users uh, for cloud storage. Uh, how to kind of remove these fields? I mean, that also, if you just double click on this again, it just removes the field from here. Um, or the other thing is, even there are there is gear icon over here. So this also gives a lot of different options on what you can do, I can just remove it, filter on it, uh, pivot on it, um, hide it from visualization. So let's say I bring in category as well. So I wanna look at my top applications uh, with the category. Um, so then I bring in the category into it uh, with the application. And so if I don't want to show this, I can just hide it from the visualization. So that's what I just did, uh, hide it from the visualization. So it just doesn't show it over here, but you are seeing it in the data. So there are different options in this gear icon as well, which you can uh, play with. That how do you kind of reorganize these uh, columns? I mean, that was also a simple thing. I mean, you can just kind of drag and drop. Let's say if I want to see for these applications, how many events are also generated? So that is it. Okay, so number of users is 33,000, but how many events they are generating? So I can kind of click on that, bring that in here as well. And the, the thing I wanted to show you was how it changes kind of the visualization. So now the number of events, number of users, I don't even see number of users because they are much. Um, kind of lower than the number of events. So that's where you can start playing with this gear icon over here. It's there for each of the visualizations, create a new access. So right now it's only kind of left access what is there. If I move it to right, it introduces one more access for me so that I can kind of calibrate my numbers according to it. So let's say if I wanna bring in the total bytes as well, how many bytes are getting uploaded, downloaded to it with the users. That's how you kind of manipulate with the access so that you can show both data sets. Kind of mix up things between bar and line. There are options. I'm right now in the series. So right now I have two metrics, number of users, number of events. For number of events, rather than having the bar charts, I wanna show the line chart. I can just change it over here. I can play with the values I want to show, let's say I want to label all of them. So then it brings in kind of labeling. I think this is also one of the pain points in today's PDF that we don't have too much customization around this. 
but you can kind of decide you want labels, you don't want labels. So um, all of those options are over here as well. The other thing is playing with the colors. I mean, there are different options, like it's the same place where I was showing the line. You can play with any of these colors as well. I mean, you can change them according to Netscope colors. I think uh, we can change that. how do you format the bytes? Because you wanna show kind of them in GBs and MBs and things like that. So these, all of these numbers can be formatted as well. So in this case, I wanna format uh, the total bytes. Uh, and then here is where I can format it. So right now it's just kind of showing me a big number over here, right? So this is where I can say, I wanna format it in um, kind of GBs. So this format um, is similar to Excel. I wanna do it, let's say by GBs. Um, this is kind of the, now you're seeing 250 GB, right? Uh, KB, MB, GB. So that's why there are three commas because I'm rolling up that at GB level. And then given I want to format the number remaining, that's how the format is. So let's take an example. If the customer wants to look at uh, the number of ap applications by the risk level. So if I bring in kind of CCL into it and the number of applications, so this will give me now um, the number of applications by the risk level, right? So, so now shows up, right? So right now, the one way to kind of filter of it is, okay, I, I don't want now, right? So, okay, no, actually, I don't want now. So you can just simply bring in the CCL into the filter. So I can bring in from here or I can bring in from here as well and say filter. So I can just bring in and say it's not now. Um, there are two ways to filter it. I can say it's not blank or it's not now. And then it just takes it out. The other thing which you can do is uh, you can label it differently. and. Um, so right now, no null is showing up, but let's say if I bring that back up, what I can do is I can label it as whatever I want. So kind of going into series, uh, but in pie chart, what I can do is I can label these things differently. So I want that null to show as unknown. I can just come over here and just label it and it will show up as unknown, or I can label it anything I want. So there is a way to label some of these values for pie chart. You can filter them out as well. I can just say, okay, CCL is not null, and then it will filter it out. Um, yeah, for of course web, we will not have uh, CCL. For cloud app, the places where we have not done the investigation and we have not defined the CCL, all of those places it will be null. If I pull an app right now, uh, for web traffic app will be null. Thank you for your time today. See you soon with another great video like this.